Roy, to understand human beings deeply, one of the ways is to try to discern very rigorously how we differ from other animals. Uh, as a social psychologist, as a social psychological theorist, how do you approach that problem? In my field, there, there's the nature and the culture group. The cultural psychologists mostly study differences among cultures. The nature people mostly study similarities, the way humans are similar to animals. Mm. Uh, I think if you want to understand what makes us human, you should switch those, look at how all cultures are the same, or most cultures are the same, and how humans differ from animals. And those are the keys to specifically human nature. Mm. Uh, and it is clear that although we are animals, when we are similar in many other respects, we differ in crucial ways. Uh, we live uh, uh, in, in, in a kind of culture uh, where the environment is all based on shared understandings. We have progress in a way uh, that other animals don't. Wolves, for example, very social animals. Uh, but each generation of wolves pretty much starts over. Uh, a bunch of wolves out in the woods are not living very differently from how they live, lived 10,000 years ago. Whereas uh, it's because all the learning that's accumulated is just accumulated by individuals. When the individual dies, the, the new babies are starting over getting their own learning. We contribute our learning to a joint pool and we share it. We, we, we publish it, we talk to others, we, uh, uh, we write it down. And so each human generation starts where the previous mm -hmm. one left off. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge advantage. Progress in evolution is painfully slow. It requires change in the genes that make you do stuff. Progress in human culture these days is, is a, a so rapid. Uh, uh, if you go back to what life was like 50 years ago, it's almost unrecognizably different. Okay, so how, how does that happen? How, how does it happen that we are able to do that? I mean, we take it for granted because we teach our children, we learn from our teachers, and so that's just the way things normally look. But any place else you look in the animal kingdom, it's not there. Communication was the key. Communication, I think, was the, the foundational human trait that set us apart from others, uh, that we communicate you know, and we begin to represent that other people's minds have different ideas than ours do, and so we can argue with them, we can teach them things, we can tell them helpful things that they seem not to know, uh, we can make inferences about their mental states. Uh, all this minimal or entirely absent in other species, uh, a few just tiny few steps in that direction. But that enables us to share information, to create social systems, to plan collectively so that uh, uh, you know, early humans planning to hunt together. Um, they can say, you go over there, I'll go over here, we'll outwit them. So I'm trying to get a hierarchy of, 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 and getting down to more fundamental. We started with culture, and then at the basis of culture was communication. And then at the basis of, of, uh, of communication was the ability of language. Uh, yeah. How far do you go in this sequence to get down to the real sort of fundamental differences? Or at, e at each stage you have emergent laws coming in and it's sort of a At big each stage collective. emergent laws come in and we become more and more different from the animals from whom mm. we evolved. Mm. Uh, if you looked at the simplest, uh, earliest humans, uh, their lives were somewhat uh, much more animalistic. And if we looked it back, we would say that's living like animals. <laughs> uh, it was probably a step or two forward, but uh, uh, yes, we have you know, ways of prolonging our lives now. No other species has uh, uh, prolonged its life expectancy by virtue of its uh, discoveries, whereas we've what, roughly tripled the human life expectancy because of research and advances in health and medical technology and uh, now behavioral changes in uh, how to live better and eat better and all those things. We've improved our actual lifespan. That's uh, that's remarkable, but that's, that's unique. Uh, yeah, and the question is, is, is what drives that? What are the fundamentals that drive that? Is it, is it a theory of mind, uh, where we know that other minds exist, a capacity for language, uh, uh, and how all, what are the fundamental building blocks that enable this hierarchy of culture to develop? Uh, there are multiple things that go into making culture possible, uh, several of which uh, you just mentioned. Um, but uh, you know, once you understand that others have mental states, uh, that you can communicate to them, then there's a reason to improve your means of communication. People started developing better gestures, uh, and then when the voice box moved down, then we started developing language. Uh, once we did that, then we could share more language. 
uh, and so language gradually expanded from a few grunts and signals uh, to the uh, the modern languages, which have uh, arguably a couple hundred thousand words each. Um, beyond language, uh, we can share ideas, we can argue about them. Uh, there's a very important paper uh, uh, published a couple of years ago, looking at all the research on thinking and all the mistakes people make and say, well, those are only mistakes uh, if you assume that thinking is for figuring out the truth, like a solitary <laughs> animal. But if you say thinking is for arguing, then those aren't really mistakes, where you look for arguments that fit your side rather than against. If you're looking for the truth, you want to consider both for and against. But if you're trying to argue, um, then you want argu arguments that fit your side. Um, so. By arguing, we discover the truth together and we see whose arguments prevail. Uh, that's better for all of us.